Assemble! Stay dandy, baby. I hope you guys are hungry for some big-ass epic action, because that's what you're going to get in this month's chapter of Boruto Naruto Next Generations, so let's go ahead and take a big old bite right in. Ever since the beginning of the Boruto manga series, I've been waiting for that moment where Naruto was going to be seemingly killed or sealed away or defeated by some sort of mysterious enemy, and this is the chapter that makes it all happen as Naruto and Sasuke battle against Jigen, who is actually not who we think he is. That's all fully revealed at the very end of this chapter, so I'm going to go ahead and put up that big spoiler warning now. If you haven't had a chance to read this month's chapter of Boruto, please go do it right now. Viz is making it free for everybody to check out, so you simply have no excuse. What I also really loved about this chapter is that it was just pure unadulterated raw action. Naruto and Sasuke doing what they do best, bringing out their most powerful abilities against Jigen, the leader of Kara, which of course means we're going to be able to see the power of Karama, we're going to be able to see Susano, and we're going to see Jigen finally going all out. Going through his crazy Otsusuki transformation, where he gets a big-ass gnarly horn on top of his head, and it is just freaking metal! Maybe it's just me, but are the best parts of the Boruto manga the parts that actually don't involve Boruto at all? This basically feels kind of like a classic chapter of Naruto, and of course it gives me something that I've been wanting to see since the beginning of the series, which of course has been withheld from the readers and the viewers, which has seen Naruto and Sasuke team up. Whenever they do this, it is just freaking awesome. Awesome. And when they go up against an especially strong enemy, that just makes it all the more satisfying. And Jigen is incredibly powerful, being able to basically outmaneuver both Naruto and Sasuke, going up against their most powerful abilities. Hell, there's a scene where Jigen straight up kicks Sasuke directly out of his Susano, his most powerful defense. This alone should be able to give you a clue of how strong this guy really is. Although, they're not undermining Naruto and Sasuke at all. These two are still the most powerful characters in the series, and even Jigen himself knows that, knowing that he only has a small amount of time to actually use his power to take these two characters out. He also realizes that Sasuke could potentially be the biggest threat, being the fact that he knows space-time jutsu. He could try and trap these guys here, but since Sasuke can travel through dimensions, he realizes that he has got to get rid of him. So Sasuke ends up being his very first target, and that's when Naruto has to make the grave decision that Sasuke is going to have to leave. If anyone's going to make a difference, it's going to be Sasuke. Sasuke here, and Naruto, always being the selfless one, manages to make the ultimate sacrifice, enforcing Sasuke to actually leave this mysterious dimension and battlefield. And that's when Jigen decides that he is going to seal Naruto away. Not kill him, but seal him. And this could be for a number of reasons. One, he probably realizes that Naruto is incredibly strong and could still have the potential to go all out even more and potentially kill him. That and the fact that Jigen, throughout the entire chapter, despite the fact that he is really doing a great job of fighting against Naruto and Sasuke seems to be losing all of his power and that's when we get that big reveal at the very end of the chapter but before we get to that Jigen does actually manage to seal away Naruto in this massive kettle like object and when this actually happens and because he's in another dimension no one has the ability to sense Naruto's chakra which essentially means they think that he is dead this is made even more clear at the very end of the chapter when Kawaki's arm suddenly falls off and that's because it's all connected to Naruto's chakra. This is a big ominous moment for everyone as they realize that the Hokage, the leader of Konoha Village, is officially gone at this point. The era of peace is officially over, the Hokage is missing, and shit about to get real. But let's just go ahead and talk about the biggest reveal of this chapter, and that's all about Jigen himself. Throughout the course of this entire battle, there's this weird black jewel which is embedded on his stomach, and as he's actually battling and exerting all of his power, these cracks start to appear in it. And this is basically just letting us know that he's getting weaker and weaker by the moment. But it isn't until the very end of the chapter, after battling against Naruto and Sasuke, that we realize that Jigen is actually a vessel. A vessel for another being. Now, this is really important to know, as we already know that Kawaki himself is being pripped and prem to be some sort of brand new vessel of some kind for some sort of super powerful entity or some sort of powerful attack or jutsu or monster or thing from another dimension. Who knows what it could be? But it's made officially clear 
in this chapter. You see, I always thought that Jigen might actually be a member of the Otsusuki clan, but it really it makes sense that he's not. He doesn't resemble the typical Otsusukis, having that distinctive white skin, the creepy Byakugan eyes. He simply seems like something else entirely, and that's actually because he is. You see, Jigen is actually a vessel himself, a vessel for a brand new character who goes by the name of Ishiki, Otsusuki, who apparently is one of the other members of this clan which came to this planet along with Kaguya a very long time ago and could very well be the former partner of Kaguya, maybe even very well her husband or brother or family member that has never been conveniently brought up until this moment. When you're willing to accept that, that's when we learn that there's an Otsusuki clan member out there who has grand aspirations of attaining some sort of brand new body. Now, this is easy to accept as it's not the first time in the series that we've seen a villain who is trying to basically gain a brand new form or a brand new body. I mean, just look at Orochimaru. That's kind of like his entire shtick altogether. And now we have this celestial being which is trying to do the same thing. And it also makes me question a few other things about the series and how the Otsusuki clan works with the power of karma. For the fact that Baruto seems to continuously have these visions of Momoshiki in his mind and has also seemed to obtain the power of his very own karma. We, for all we know, Momoshiki could still continue to exist within Boruto and he doesn't even realize it. Boruto could very well be the vessel for Momoshiki as well. But currently what's going on here is that there is this super-powered Ishiki who is trying to get a brand new body, and that body is none other than Kawaki. That's the reason that they've actually been raising this kid in the first place. The thing is, though, there's still a lot of mysteriousness of what's going on and how long this guy's actually been planning this event, how long Kara has actually existed. Maybe they've been in their very own dimension. Maybe this has been all some sort of convoluted plan. Maybe this is just the author they're making shit up and pulling it out of their ass at the last second. I don't know, but the implication is that this is a pretty big freaking deal right here. With the introduction of a character by the name of Ishiki, that alone has honestly got me excited. And also that one scene where Sasuke actually went to that mysterious dimension where there was the weird Ten Tails monster, and we actually got to see that vision of Jigen and his transformation, that probably wasn't Jigen at all. That was probably the real Ishiki Otsusuki. So, big shit going on. What's the rundown on this chapter of Boruto Naruto Next Generations? One, I love a good action chapter, and this definitely delivered in spades. The battle between Naruto, Sasuke, and Jigen was just freaking awesome. I especially loved it that they pretty much pulled out all the stops of all their superpower techniques, of seeing the massive Kurama form, of seeing the Susano, or just the fact that Jigen can seemingly defend himself just against anything with the weird power of his black spears, which can just come from anywhere, whether they be on his body or the actual ground itself. But again, one of the best things about watching Naruto and Sasuke fight together is how they combine their abilities together, using his space-time jutsu, to, to sort of swap bodies and move around and do all this crazy shit. It's just really freaking cool. But this entire chapter is just bookended by a massive revelation of Jigen actually being the vessel for this brand new character of Ishiki. And I did a little bit of research on the character, and just like a lot of the uh, other members of the Otsusuki clan, they all seem to be taking their inspiration and names from Japanese mythology and folklore. The character of Ishiki actually takes his name from Isun. And the only reason that this is something that means anything to me is because I actually played the video game Okami, which actually features a character who has the very same name. And Isun is a character who exists within Japanese mythology and folklore for having the ability to basically become like a little small guy and transform into someone big. When Jigen revealed his abilities for the first time of being able to shrink objects including himself and weapons, everybody compared him to Ant-Man. It was impossible not to do so, especially with the fact that Ant-Man has become very popular over the last couple years for appearing in the Marvel films. Now that we see that he has a, a connection to Ishiki, who also seems to be an inspiration from Isun of Japanese mythology, it makes sense while this character has the ability to shrink and grow in size. It's a pretty cool little callback, and it's just the type of thing that the Naruto series has always liked to do. But this chapter right here, guys, introduces what is effectively the new major villain of the series and lets us understand a little bit more about what Kara is doing and also brings more credence to the name of the organization, which apparently means husk. They're a husk of their former selves, a husk of Ishiki. Ishiki doesn't have a physical form anymore and he needs a brand new one, whether it be Jigen or the body of Kawaki, which of course makes me realize and begs the question, was Baruto even battling against Kawaki at the very beginning of that series in that ominous flash-forward sequence? Or was that really Ishiki in the body 
of Kawaki. It is really hard to say at this point, but I'd have to say that eventually it is going to get to that moment. Now, where the other members of Kara factor into all of this storyline it still remains a mystery. I can't wait to see what Kashi Koji is going to do during all of this. All I know is I'm pretty damned excited to see what's actually going to be happening next, and this chapter has again only gotten me even more excited for the future of the franchise. And again, I just want to see it in anime format, like that's the, the thing I care about the most at this point, and I know it's not going to get there anytime soon, considering that if they do start to actually adapt these storylines, they are just going to run out of time quick. Plus, there's the big announcement that apparently in the anime version, they're going to do a storyline where Boruto actually somehow travels to the past and hangs out with a younger Naruto. I don't know. It's going to be like Back to the Future Naruto style. Great Scott! I can't wait to see how it's all going to go down. What I will say is I loved this chapter and I love how almost every single one manages to get me even more excited for the future of the series. Like I said at the beginning, I think some of the best chapters of the series are the ones that don't involve Boruto and more sort of, uh, you know, lift and tell storylines from some of the best parts of the original Naruto series, how this is all connecting to Kaguya and the Otsutsuki clan, and of course, Naruto and Sasuke. I mean, come on. And, and here, we just have more speculation. Is Naruto just gonna die in this place? How is he going to survive inside of this seemingly endless landscape of a kettle? How is he going to eat? How is he going to drink? How is he going to sleep? What's going to happen to this character? Is he truly going to die? Are they gonna take out the main character of the series like that? If they do, I think it's gonna be kind of disappointing. Does this space exist in some sort of void where you don't actually have to do anything? Is this like a hyperbolic time chamber kind of situation where only a little bit of time actually passes? It's just so weird and there's so many questions and that's really why I made this video in the first place is because I really want to hear from you guys. You got my thoughts about this chapter and I loved it. No question, five out of five from me. But I want to hear from you. What did you think about this chapter with Naruto and Sasuke battling against Jigen, the vessel of Ishiki Otsusuki? Do you have any theories about what his ultimate plan is going to be, his connection to Kaguya, what his ultimate plan with Kawaki is going to be? Let's just discuss all of it in the comments section below. And with that, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more. If you did like this video, I would really appreciate it if you would take your shuriken and throw it right towards the like button. I'll see you all next time, and as always, stay down now, baby.